Welcome to another episode of Boom or Bust, the draft show. I'm Max Chadwick alongside PJ Clark and Tate Sigurd. We've got another scouting report for you guys right now. We did Trevor Lawrence. We did Justin Fields. Many think those are the top two quarterbacks in the draft. Of course, They're wrong. One of our co-hosts thinks differently. Now we're breaking down maybe the most divisive player on our show. Trey Lance, the quarterback from North Dakota State. Before we get going with that, though, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, comment what you think about Trey Lance and where you think he should go. Also, follow our Twitter and Reddit at Boom or Bust Draft on Twitter and at Boom or Bust Draft Show on Reddit. All right, so some quick background on Trey Lance. He's PJ's king. He's six foot three. He's 224 pounds. He was a three star recruit, number 120 quarterback Stars in, two, in 2018. A little Throw bit different Throw than Lawrence and Fields. Lawrence and Fields. Oh, oh stars don't matter, PJ. Stars don't matter. <laughs> Throw them out. Go. Go. Stars don't matter. Hmm. We're ready to get going. We're ready. We're ready going. Out. Listen, Lawrence stats, and Fields. I heard it here first. Stats, stars don't, matter. don't matter. Throw them out the window. I didn't say Who stats, needs I said them? Stars. Stars. Stars don't matter. We're already starting. We have a graphic it. on this I haven't even in, asked in your the chamber. Yet. I'm just literally saying what he was, and you guys are already screaming about it. But listen, Lawrence and Fields, top two quarterbacks in 2018, also top two overall recruits. Meanwhile, Trey Lance was number 2006. Yeah, recruit somebody whiffed there. In 2018. Yeah, not great. So also, though, he also didn't even start playing quarterback until ninth grade. And he also didn't have any FBS offers to play quarterback other than Boise State and Western Michigan. Decided to go to FCS Powerhouse in North Dakota State. He sat behind Easton Stick, redshirted last year. This past year, he won the Walter Payton Award, which is basically the FCS version of the Heisman Trophy. And why? Well, he completed 67% of his passes, nearly 2,800 yards, 28 touchdowns. And we're going to keep hitting you with this fact. I'm sure you've heard it so many times. Zero picks as well. Also ran for 1,100 yards and 14 touchdowns with only two fumbles. None of them were recovered by the other team. So he finished the year with zero turnovers. Also, more importantly, led the Bison to a 16-0 record, their third straight national championship, and their eighth in the last nine years. PJ, you love this kid. What are the strengths of Trey Lance as a prospect? Well, first, you just said it. He's a winner, and I'm going to piss Tate off here. He is a winner. Trevor Lawrence, a winner, has only lost one game in his college career. Trey Lance has lost zero. Absolutely none. And yes, we'll get into the competition aspect. I guarantee you we will have a long debate about this later. But he's a winner jabronis. first and foremost. The, the first and foremost. Hey, this is my turn. You get to go in a second, buddy. Skip Bayless right now. <laughs> second. This is my time. Second. This guy throws the best deep ball in the class. That's, that's just it. I his deep accuracy, he does the Russell Wilson thing. He's got the arc perfected, gets a lot of air under the deep ball. That's my favorite thing about him is the, his his deep accuracy and the ability to make those deep throws, which matters. Another thing you mentioned it: no turnovers, no interceptions. This guy is so smart. He doesn't take risk. It's not that he's risk averse. He doesn't always check down. He knows where his guys are and he makes smart throws. He goes through his reads. He's pretty quick, but he doesn't always have to because his wide receivers are pretty good. You mentioned it. NDSU is a powerhouse. They have the best players in FCS and those guys get open. So he doesn't always have to go to his second read, but he's very smart when he does. He doesn't force anything. And then, last, you mentioned it, absolute tank with the ball in his hands. 1,100 rushing yards, 14 touchdowns. This guy will run through you, run over you, jump over you, spin you out of your shoes. He is dynamic with the ball in his hands. And perhaps last, it, it's something that maybe Trevor Lawrence, we don't see as much. A lot of 11 personnel at North Dakota State. They run the ball a lot. He's comfortable under center, which I think matters when you're converting somebody into an NFL quarterback. Is that what we're looking for? We're looking for a running back now, a quarterback? I'm sorry, we're looking for Cam Newton to run through us? How did that turn out, PJ? Career over at 28. Come on. I mean, I mean, Come he on. won an MVP in 15 games, so okay. like, like, it kind of <laughs> works. There. Um, I'll take Cam Newton. Tate, what do you like? I'm sure there's not much the way you've been bad-mouthing him almost every episode, though. Uh, I, I mean, there's some. You know, he's, he's a good quarterback. <laughs> um, there's no doubt about it. He's certainly, uh, you know, QB3. We'll get into that later, I guess, where he stands with the class. Um, like PJ mentioned, he's got crazy arm strength. Uh, I don't know if he's the best deep ball in the class. He's certainly probably top five, top three. I, I don't know. I haven't 
cast, stacked him up against Brock Purdy and Kellen Mond yet. Um, we don't um, need to stack him up against Kellen but, Mond. But, we don't um, need to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's got a crazy arm strength, uh, decision making 28 and 0, like uh, PJ and Max mentioned. I won't harp on that too much. Um, they do love to run the ball over there in North Dakota. Um, how if that's a pro or a con? I'm not exactly sure. I have something for that. I'll, I'll get to that. Better, I do have something. You know, uh, it's another tool in the bag, I guess, if you need it. But um, he's no Lamar Jackson in terms of running. You know, and uh, if we're looking for guys who, you well, know, running to help he can throw the ball. Well, sure, yes. And so I don't really want him to Come run on. in the NFL. So I would like him to stop doing that in college. But that's just the system he works in. Um, and he's got pretty good pocket presence, even though he is playing against, you know, wet noodles of a defense. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. My whole thing with Trey Lance right now is just wait and see. Um, he throws the ball maybe five times a game there in North Dakota. Oh, we'll get into um, it, Tate. We'll get into okay. it. I have okay. a list yeah. full of negatives. Believe me. <laughs> I have them, too. I'll save Listen, I'll um, save yeah, so my strengths, look, I love him. I think he's got ridiculous tools. He's right up there with Lawrence and Fields in that regard. He's got a good size, cannon for an arm, really good runner. He averaged 4.7 yards after contact at North Dakota State, almost seven yards per carry. The dude does not go down, which might be a double-edged sword when we get into my which negatives is bad, a little bit. Which is bad. I don't want my quarterback getting hurt. Yeah, uh, we'll get into getting that a little hit. bit. Look, and also, I mean, we keep mentioning over and over, he's a terrific decision maker, man. He took care of the football at a very, very impressive rate. Also, he did all of this as a red shirt freshman. Carson Wentz didn't start. Yeah, he's Carson played one Wentz, year. Yeah, Carson Wentz didn't start at North Dakota State until he's a red shirt junior. So Lance is already two years ahead of Wentz. Is probably a better prospect. Tate, now you can go now. What are some of the things you want to see improved or what are some, what are some of the weaknesses you see with Trey Lance? Um. Okay, well, his middle to intermediary accuracy strap, is strap bunzo. Okay, it's bunzo. Um, I don't see how it's looking bunzo at when he throws zero okay. interceptions. It's bunzo, folks. It's bunzo. Um, let's see. Uh, he throws the ball five times a game. I, I you know, I want an NFL quarterback who can actually throw the ball consistently. <laughs> gross exaggeration. Um, it, it's an exaggeration. Uh, his What's lowest, I think, number? was nine. His lowest it was, was nine, EJ. 18. Oh, it was 18? 18, 18 a okay. game was the average. Oh, okay. But he had a low of nine, as in he threw the ball in mm-hmm. one game nine times. Is that an NFL quarterback? I'm in not sure. In a 56-17 win. <laughs> you I'm don't asleep. need to throw I'm the asleep. ball when you're up 40 points. I don't care. I don't care. Um, and he also had one of 11. Do you know how many touchdowns he had like on those nine attempts? Three. Did you, I'm asleep. Three touchdowns. I'm asleep. Um, <laughs> Three on like, nine attempts. Like we mentioned. Hey, 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 it's my turn. I got the talking <laughs> stick. Um, so we, we mentioned Carson Wentz, the other North Dakota State quarterback, who um, I'm pretty sure we've all heard of Carson Wentz. Yes, no, shake your head, yes, yeah, no. Yeah, you hate him, but um, whatever. So, so in 2014, he had up and down season, kind of threw the ball a lot, and then a little some games. And then in 2015, he came out and threw the ball 30 times a game. So then he so he had this low season where he you know didn't throw the ball that much, and then he came out in 2015 and threw the ball a lot, improved himself, and then obviously was a high draft pick. I'm looking for Trey Lance to do the same this year. If he does that and proves that he can throw the ball like an NFL quarterback is going to have to, then I'm good with him. Then I'm comfortable with him. He can be QB3 still behind Fields and Lawrence, but is definitely a, probably a top five pick. Um, for those curious, he had six games this year with 15 or less pass attempts. I mean, that's bad, folks. That is not NFL quarterback standard. Okay, um, I agree. And then also, I agree with that. I mentioned, I mentioned these D2 jabronis that he's playing against. Okay, he's got wet noodles D2. against him. Defense. Just not one you look at some of these just receivers, they're open by 45 yards. Even Max with his 20-yard throw could hit him, okay? That's how bad it is, folks. He, they're playing that was a against a shot. That was worthwhile. Okay, <laughs> we we're talking about Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence playing in actual divisions, actual conferences against actual defenses. I mean, this is Trey Lance and FCS football, okay? Let's, let's say, hey, let's, come on, wet noodles. Um, and then finally... I'm going to I'm going to dock points here, but North Dakota State is to the D2 world what Golden State is to the NBA. I mean, we're talking he's playing Paul the worst team in the league. We're talking (laughs) pre-processed Sixers and we're talking about the New York Knicks as his opponents. Okay, I mean, these guys they are playing are bad. folks. They're bad. Okay. Um, RJ would never. I love RJ would never. RJ would never. This is coming from a Browns fan, by the way. This is coming from a Browns. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I said Okay, it. so you know so what bad football I looks like. I love I love the I fact do. that Tate I'm writes like a novel. He wrote a novel for field strengths and Lance weaknesses and yeah, it comes to fields. He just doesn't care. 
field's weaknesses and land strengths is like a quick like, oh yeah. He's, like, he's like got this. like three senses. <laughs> okay, so so here's what I have, because I'm the one who actually cares about this. Tate, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little argument. I agree with most of what you said. For, first, the literal first con that I have is he doesn't always need to go through his reads because his team is too damn good. They get open. Yeah. The the play calling is really, really good. Play calling is another weakness to me. Not that this is his fault at all. He only throws the ball because he doesn't have to. He's not calling the plays, and he he runs the ball because that's what they give him. He's not, you know, a, a Syracuse guy. Eric Eric Dungy was a tuck and run if his first read was not there. That is not Trey Lance. He does not immediately turtle and take the ball for whatever he wants. He goes through his reads and then, yeah, scramble. But half of these are designed runs, and that's not his fault. I understand why you, you might hold it against him, but he, it, that's not up to him, right? Were you in agreement on that? I mean, sure. I'm just talking. We need if we're talking investment piece for my NFL franchise. I want a guy who I know I, can I throw the ball that, like an NFL quarterback. But if quarterback. you're North Dakota State, why would you? Why would you fix what? Clearly okay, but isn't I have. Broken? If I have this question on if he can do this, then I don't care if it's North Dakota State's fault or Trey Lance's fault. I have this question against him. So then you have to make the educated guess based on all of the deep throws he's made. And that this is another thing. So you want to play the competition. Yeah, he's playing against guys he's better than, right? I will 100% and his team is better than everybody that they're playing against. I completely agree with that and I understand that. But you have to keep in mind, his wide receivers are not Big Ten ACC Clemson wide receiver you. Like, they, they're worse wide receivers playing against worse cornerbacks. Everything, the mean is down on everything. But these are the best it's not wide like receivers he has of T. Higgins SCS versus against Garbo. D2 corners. It's not like he has, like, Justin Ross this playing is the best against of the some best. garbage He's guy. got every matchup. Every matchup he wants, he has. Because not they're NDSU and they're winning every matchup. Yeah, okay, so yes. here's the thing. They win every matchup, right? <laughs> but he still has to make the throws. Which he does. You could suck, and your wide receivers could be wide and they're open, all open every time. By and you could, yards yeah, but you don't the always best have players. to hit them. But he could not hit them. He hits all of them because they're all wide open. But it, the, you still have to make you the drive throw. An 18, the, the competition knock, through some of those gaps. The competition knock. I will give you on the running. He runs through guys noodles, because they are wet noodles, and he can, right? But he still has to throw to wide open wide receivers. I get that they might be oh. five open, five <laughs> yards more open, wide open wide receivers Holy than, than a guy in the big ten. But he makes the throws, and they're not there. always wide open. And then the first thing you said, the intermediate accuracy is not as good as I'd like it to be. He's really deep ball or bust which I think is fine when you're hitting it at the rate he does and you throw a deep ball like he does. Yes, I do think he's better than Justin Fields. And that opinion is not going to change before this season. (laughs) He has this enormous weight. And here's the thing. Another thing. His mechanics could get better. He throws from a weird arm slot. His release is pretty quick. Throws from a weird arm slot, but he's got great footwork. And again, he's familiar under center, which I think is an overwhelming positive. So in short, he takes too many hits because his offensive coordinator is an idiot and calls too many designed runs. His team is too good, but he still hits all of these wide receivers and maybe don't throw like a shortstop across the diamond. Other than that, I'm good. Wait. You heard it here first, folks. P- PJ Clark says Trey Lance has this enormous weight of throwing to wide open receivers. Oh, <laughs> you so still pity. have to hit so, them. I feel so bad for you him. Still all right. have to hit what them. a and hard not life even wide Lance open has all the time. <laughs> all right, listen. My weaknesses for Trey Lance, I'm, I'm basically in the middle with you guys, just like Justin Fields t- again. Um, I think he's a lot more raw than Lawrence and Fields are as passers, despite having similar tools. I think they all have really, really good tools, kind of even tools. But I think he's more raw than they are. Which is entirely fair. We literally have a 16-game sample size. And I acknowledge that, and I should have had that written down, too. I get it. But if we get this year, which isn't a given, but if we do, he could get better, he could get worse, he could be just as good. But in what we have now, which isn't a lot, he's pretty damn good. Yeah, look, I mean, look, and also I have, if his receiver wasn't wide open, he wasn't throwing it. He took off and ran on 10% of his dropbacks. That works in college, and it worked out amazingly for North Dakota State. That will not fly in the NFL. And, I mean, we keep going back to it. He was very protected by North Dakota State as a passer. He never really had to win with his arm. 
He only attempted 18 passes a game. The average in the NFL was 35, almost double but that. But that's a, that's a virtue of play calling. He doesn't well, also, call the plays. I, but I just mentioned he ran on 10% of his dropbacks. If the receiver was not there, he was running. He wasn't really taking any chances with the not football. Small numbers, because he can, ru- he can run further right. than but a five-yard out. I want to see him. I want to see him complete more passes where the defender is. I'm maybe sorry, closer. my quarterback cares about winning games and getting first downs right. more it than it a works. completion. It percentage. works at the FCS level. It's not and throwing to wide open receivers. I want to see him. I want oh to see yes, him because the ACC defenses are exactly what Trevor Lawrence needs see, to go. You against. see Lawrence and Fields make more NFL type throws than Trey Lance. You have to. Admit I, that. I I make I see Justin Fields because he's playing against by far the best defenses of the three. Yeah, and li- okay, listen, let me just finish up. Lawrence attempted 27 passes a game. Fields attempted 25, Lance 18. I want to see the playbook open up a little bit more for him. So that's more on the coaches than him. Um, I want to see them let him t- win with his arm more because really he won with his legs and he could win with his win with his arm, I think, but they didn't let him. So I want it's more of, it's not like he can't do it. It's more of, I haven't seen it yet. So that's why Which I'm- Which is a little, fair, and it's, a it's not up. his fault. And the last thing is, really, in all the games I watched, he never slid. And I kind of like that as a quarterback, but also when I'm investing a franchise well, in him. He's ginormous. He's a he ginormous doesn't, human being. Because they can't a lot tackle. Of, he's he a takes ginormous. A lot Good of Lord. Lawrence and Lawrence and Fields. He still takes I, a lot of hits because they run him into the ground. Listen, Lawrence These and Fields. wet noodles slide. can't tackle. Lawrence and Fields slide. Lance, I've never seen slide yet. Um, PJ, now finish it out. What's the bottom line on Trey Lance? Where does he rank for you? Where would you take him? What, what do you think about Trey Lance? The bottom line right now, I think he's the probably the fourth best player in this draft behind Lawrence Sewell and Jamar Chase. I would take him in the top 10. I'm completely fine. I understand the small sample size. I get it. He's firmly QB2 until proven otherwise. In the direction of more sample size on him, maybe he gets a little worse. A, a game to watch, folks, is if this college football season happens – NDSU is going to Eugene and playing Oregon week one. And that's really going to be it. That's going to be the national coming out party, either good or bad for this guy. And that is a game you all need to be watching if you're prepared for this 2021 draft. QB2 for me could go up or down right now. Preseason QB2 fields could get better. He could get worse. But I mean, this guy, uh, one of our Twitter followers said Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson's body. I like that. The, uh, my line was going to be Russell Wilson at the Rich Kid Halloween where you get the king size candy bars because he's way bigger. Uh, baby uh, Cam Newton's little brother that didn't grow to be 6'6". Six, six. Like, those are the comps, man. This guy throws Russ's deep ball. He's got the air under and it. I, I think those are the comps. Real quick, PJ, I want to ask you, do you think there's any way he overtakes Trevor Lawrence for QB1 in your opinion? Is there a universe? Yeah, I mean there is. He could he could go rip off thirty attempts a game like Wentz did and just be better. But I'm not I'm not planning on that happening. Would I be very happy if it did? Certainly. But I I mean, is there a universe? Yeah, I'm not expecting it though. But I do think I mean it's way closer than you two think. I do think it's it's a conversation right now. Right. Okay. And PJ, real quick before we get to Tate, I want to ask you as a Jets fan who loves Sam Darnold, what happens if the Jets are picking high and Sam Darnold has another not great year and Trey I Lance need to is know, on the board? I need to know. Okay. So here's my thing: is that the New York <laughs> Jets are such a garbage ass organization that I can't, in good faith, judge a quarterback based on what they've given Sam Darnold. So if, like, Brashad Perriman doesn't solve the world's issues, it's not. Like, I can't just insert Trey Lance or even Trevor Lawrence and, like, expect things to change. Right. But you like Darnold more than Lance as a prospect, you would say. Well, right yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. Considering Sam's only 23, he's a year and a half older. Yeah, I, I take my shot with the guy three years in the NFL under his belt. All right. All right, Tate, what is your bottom line on Trey Lance? Where does he rank and where would you take him in this draft? Uh, I mean, he's QB3 for now. I think uh, that's a safe take, I feel like. PJ out here saying he's QB2. Um, At the end of the day, I mean, he's playing against wet noodles with wet noodles for arms. Uh, They can't tackle, can't play defense. He's throwing to guys that, you know, have 20 yards of space near him. Um, I... We, we mentioned it a little. I just need to see him throw to win and not run to win. It's a little bit on the coaches, uh, and, you know, they get out to these ladies, and then they're just going to run the ball, um, and they don't really need to throw the ball anymore. It is it is what it is. He's playing against D2 jabronis. Um, 
so I need to see him see him throw the win uh, and see him throw like an NFL quarterback and throw like an NFL quarterback per game. And then I can be comfortable saying, OK, maybe he's QB, two. Maybe we'll, you know, slide him up the board or something. That's very fair. Look, he's firmly QB three. And if honestly, Fields and Lawrence are two of my favorite quarterback prospects I can remember. It, Trey Lance would have been a QB one in almost any other draft, man. He's my number six prospect right now behind Lawrence, Fields, Sewell, Chase and Parsons. I love the tools and I, I think the kid could be great. But I think Lawrence and Fields are far more polished right now as passers. But he's probably – this is one of the best top three quarterbacks I can remember right now. Maybe since 2004 with Eli Roethlisberger I mean, and Phillip Rivers. The, con- the conversation should be just on the baseline, is he better than Wentz right now? And I my is. answer is yes. Yeah, I agree too. I agree too. I, look, I take him firmly in top 10. PG, you just mentioned it. Maybe even top five. I can't wait to see him against Oregon. Oregon's got a pretty good defense, probably the best secondary in the country. Oregon's got two really good corners. I can't wait until he goes up against them. And Kayvon Thibodeau, who's a guy, 2022 guy, little preview there right there, but he's really, really good. And look, Trey Lance, he reminds me a lot of Dak Prescott. Both are very good runners in college. Um, Some question marks about passing in college as well. Lance is a far better prospect than I thought Dak was, but I could see them having similar NFL careers. All right. That's all we got on Trey Lance. Again, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and comment what you think about Trey Lance. Is he QB1? Is he QB2, QB3? Maybe even lower. And also follow our Twitter and Reddit at Boom or Bust Draft on Twitter and Boom or Bust Draft Show on Reddit. So for PJ Clark and Tate Sigworth, I'm Max Chadwick. Have a great night.